Hey, Space Watchers, and good morning. It's the second day of the Space Symposium here in Colorado Springs, and I have the great pleasure here at the DLR booth to talk with the serial entrepreneur Tuana Jasice. I hope that the pronunciation was acceptable. It's close enough. Okay, it's <laughs> super. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Hey, it's another freezing day here in Colorado, <laughs> so. Tell us a bit about your for-profit organizations that you're doing or that you that you work with on. Of course. So my for-profit organizations are new startups. So I have a holding company called Tuana Group, and I have two subsidiary companies called Aero AI Voyages and Aero AI Design Lab. And we're currently in the process of getting our patents for our products and services. So I can't tell you too much about them yet, but please stay tuned. Um, we will be able to announce them soon. So let's talk about that, what you can talk about. So Which about is the your non-profit, non -profit. yes. So, uh, it's called um, Aero AI Global Solutions. So yes. what is the core? Can you help us? So Aero AI Global Solutions, we utilize AI and space technologies for humanitarian purposes and for environmental purposes as well. So we have uh, project design. We br design these projects and we actually go ahead and um, implement these uh, projects. So we also have an education side of this. So in the future, we would like to give uh, scholarships to students who are interested in utilizing AI and space technologies for um, the purpose of be the betterment of this uh, our planet here on Earth. So. Uh, we, that's going to come later on, but we, right now we're focusing on our, our projects and okay. one of our current projects that we're working on is a project called Aero AI Guardian. And in Aero AI Guardian, we're currently implementing my um, journal publication um, called Utilizing um, you know, Space Technologies for the Purposes of uh, Monitoring International Human and Wildlife Trafficking Hotspots. So we're going to go ahead and implement this um, international system. And so we are currently looking for access to radio frequency data, radar, AI, and optical satellite imagery in order to monitor, uh, in order to monitor these hotspots. So we're looking to partner with satellite companies that can provide us with uh, these technologies. And then we're looking for funding from Homeland Security. And we, in addition to that, we would like to partner with uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. And then we would combine the data that we receive from the satellite companies with the resources from our partners. And one of our partners is the Royal Foundations United for Wildlife, uh, which was founded by Prince William in uh, 2013. So we would combine all that data, give it to Homeland Security, so they can actually utilize um, this data for evidence in court. So that's why the um, data would need to be open source for us to use. Okay. So how does that work? How do you bring that together? So can you give us a bit of an idea so how you yeah, co coordinate all of that? Of course. So the core of this project, the reason why we're going um, ahead to uh, you know, implement this sort of project mm -hmm. is this sort of trafficking, it never really just includes one country. It's always uh, includes more than one country, so it's an international problem. So for an international problem, it needs an international solution. So we want to create the foundation for a proper international system that also keeps countries accountable. So that's why we need to bring in the government components to also utilize this evidence in court so that we can actually, um, they can actually, you know, uh, catch the illegal um, activity and actually, you know, uh, keep them accountable. So we um, will be utilizing this technology and have um, each technology will be used differently for each hotspot, and I can give an example with, um, for example, unregistered vessels. Yeah. Unregistered vessels, um, they always overlap with uh, human trafficking and also illegal fishing. With those sort of unregistered vessels, which are unregistered for obvious reasons because they're doing illegal activity, um, you would need radio frequency to geolocate this vessel, and then SAR and optical satellite imagery to locate, um, you know, get the imagery and also AI for pattern recognition. And you would combine that with um, ground task forces and the in, um, intel from investigations. And you can't have one or the other. If you have all this data, then you don't have the intel from uh, the ground investigations. If you have the ground investigations, you don't have um, yeah. the satellite component to that. So we need a combination of all this to quicken these investigations and to aid them in catching these individuals um, quicker. So who are your main partners with that? You mentioned Homeland Security, you mentioned satellite operators or satellite companies. All of the above. All of the above. So this is uh, not a single organization can go about um, doing tackling okay. this huge problem alone. So you would need a combination of um, 
all these like NGOs and um, the government agencies and also uh, satellite companies to work together to actually tackle this mm -hmm. issue. So, what is the status, the current status of your of, of your NGO? So, how real yeah. is it? <laughs> the how real is it? Well, it's real. It started real with the journal publication. Now, the implementation stage. Everyone's um, excited about this project. It's more so about mm -hmm. um, implementing it in the right. Um, way to set the right foundation for this because it's a big responsibility on our end to ensure that um, we go about the in the most um, proper way so that we can build on this foundation afterwards so that it's easier for um, partnerships to add on okay. um, after the um, pilot program starts. So it, right now we're in the process of trying to start a pilot program so we're meeting with satellite companies to um, figure out how the contract would work with the uh, with Homeland Security and then get um, in the process of trying to get funding from Homeland Security. So we're trying to figure out the implementation uh, stage of this uh, project so that it would start with a pilot program to ensure that we can show the government that you know utilizing all this technology together works. So after we show that it works we would seek more funding and build on this project. It sounds like a plan. So. <laughs> Let me ask and maybe nice the question uh, about the privacy issue. So if you deal with satellite data in, uh, in the granularity um, you, you just mentioned, you see more than just the bad guys. So how do you deal with a privacy issue? That's a great question because we value um, privacy issues and we want to make sure that we uh, um, work with the national and international um, laws and regulations regarding um, privacy issues. And that's why we want open source data um, so that we can actually discuss, like, be transparent with the public about the hotspots that you know we're monitoring, and you know, give updates to the public mm -hmm. about what's happening with the project. If it's not open source, if it's classified data, you can't do that. That's why we're trying to. It's actually making it harder for us to uh, go the open data route, but we're doing that because privacy issues are so important to us. And regarding the hotspots, for example, a hotspot isn't like the entirety of the U.S. Yeah. Hotspots would be, and I can give examples of, um, for example, local hotspots from where we're located in Miami. Um, so I have, uh, I've had a lot of discussions with the Miami State Attorney's Office and some of the local um, hotspots that they always see the sort of um, human trafficking in is, for example, unfortunately, like middle school parking lots with unregistered vehicles coming and um, for child trafficking. So they get the children from school and before the school even realizes that they're gone, they're doing the work, they're bringing them back, and then you know these children get unfortunately groomed. Um, and then it's harder to track that um, later on in their lives. So yep. that's one. Another one is like, for example, massage parlors that need to both national and international uh, trafficking routes. Others are like parks like Disney or um, certain hotels and motels. So those are very specific hotspots like locally that are also applicable to, for example, state, other states like New York or um, California, or even internationally. So those are some hotspots for human trafficking. I mean, yes, for human trafficking. For wildlife trafficking, it would be, for example, the parks where they poach these um, animals. And then also some marketplaces where they do the trades and then certain borders. So those, wildlife trafficking is uh, easier to imagine, like how we would... Um, monitor them, but human trafficking is always a uh, question that I get. So those, yeah. that's why I want to provide some local hotspots. Great. Thank you very much. We will, would love to, to learn more as we, as we go, so keep us updated. Will do. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. And with that, Space Watch out.